friends welcome to testing shala youtube channel so in this video i am going to explain you basically this would be the very common question would be asked in any of your interview they may ask what is all about test plan what are the different ingredients will be there in the test plan what are the different contents will be there in the test plan they would be asking this question very frequently now how will you answer this question right so because of that i am going to walk through the uh, template what all the different ingredients will be there in a given test plan so what all the different things you should include as part of the test plan everything i will be going to discuss in this video if you are not yet subscribed to our testing shala youtube channel till now then please subscribe and click on bell notification so that all our next videos will be in your inbox so let us understand what is all about a test plan so this is how the test plan would look like so i am going to show in and out of this test plan so that you will have a clear understanding and you need not go to any other uh, things to learn about a test plan i am going to spend good amount of time now i am going to explain you in detail what is all about a test plan right so basically the heading of this test plan would be like we should clearly talk about like which project you are writing a test plan where you should give a name of the uh, the test plan with the heading with the project name like for which project which you are working and uh, against that project you are creating uh, this test plan and also you should talk about the version detail because especially versioning is very useful when you are uh, trying to maintain this document and because a lot of version will also happen when you start uh, getting reviewed from the various stakeholders hence it is very good to keep or maintain right version numbers and as well as uh, you should also call out uh, when you have started uh, creating this document there is also a table will be there in this document where you will be tracking about uh, version of the document or version history like uh, what is a version who is authoring this document normally this document would be authored by our test leads or test managers um, everything like any any revision is happening approved by approved date everything like if something any change in the document then you should call out uh, in the recent section uh, to talk about why you are changing that uh, test plan so these are the some of the stuff uh, which will be there in the initial part of the document so let us understand then uh, what all the different uh, contents will be there in the test plan so as part of an uh, document first thing is they'll be talking about what is the pur purpose of this test plan you should clearly call that out why you are writing this test plan for what purpose you are writing this uh, test plan so basically you should i will be i will be talking in detail uh, about what is the purpose of all those things then test risk we should cover or any issues which are going to uh, assume in this project then what are the items to be tested and items not to be tested what is your test approach for various different testing types in this project you should also call out here yeah. then any exit criteria interior criteria you will be talking about or any regulation um, regulatory things you should follow all those things you should talk about then your fail criteria exit criteria and what are the test deliverables you should make at the end of the project right and uh, when you will stop your testing or when you are going to resume your testing everything you should call out here as well right and uh, what are the environment needs or stopping needs uh, for your testing so normally if you are trying to do a different type of testing then you should call out uh, at least uh, for each uh, section uh, similar uh, section let's say compatibility testing when you are trying uh, you will have a different uh, section again confirmation testing when you have functional testing again you are going to do a similar kind of uh, things then load testing which is non performance or functional testing or uh, regression testing stress testing system testing unit testing for every type of testing normally you should clearly have a different uh, normally uh, you may not have all kind of testing in a given uh, project so if you have just one uh, uh, section in that document 
it would be more than enough where in that one section would be you will be calling for every different types what is your way of handling it right so you need not call out every different uh, testing and calling out different approaches but you can make it as under one section what are the different types of testing you would be covering and for each testing type what are the different uh, things you'll be writing that you can cover as like that so let us understand so what is the purpose of this test plan the test plan basically you would be writing uh, that would give an enough information about that project the background of that project right uh, and uh, who is using this product what is the purpose of implementing that project right everything you should give a background of this test plan so that if somebody reviews this test plan that would they would get a clear understanding what you are trying to do it in this test plan so what are the different aspects you would be covering at least in very high level uh, if you are talking about that then all the stakeholders would get a clear understanding what is this document all about then you should also talk about uh, what are the risk or issues which may be anticipating in the beginning itself and this document is more of a evolving document that would give an indication to the leadership team like if something is uh, changing like then you are going to update this document basically risks you are forecasting which uh, which may pop up any time during the execution of your testing right issues which are current issues which you are going to face in that project right then so uh, this is more of this section is more uh, will be updating more regularly right and items to be tested and not tested this is more of uh, what what is your in your scope and what is out of scope basically you will be clearly calling out what are the things you are really going to test it what are the things you are not going to test it that would give a clear idea and also you will be taking a sign off from the leadership team that this is only my scope and this is this part is not my scope that means if there is any later stage if the things which you call it as a out of scope if it comes to uh, scope again then we'll have to take a change request then you should include as part of the testing items hence it is very crucial you have to clearly call out and you should be transparent you should be transparent enough as well to be calling out what is testable what is not you are going to test in this uh, testing right that is the thing you will be calling out in uh, tested or non tested section then test approach so this is a more of a overall strategy or your approach you are going to write it in this section like uh, let's say if you are calling out a functional testing like what are the different techniques you will be using what are the various uh, testing types will be executed what are the different methodologies you will be following what is your way of tackling this uh, application to test that everything you'll be calling out your approach basically will be detailing, detailing out your way of approach in taking up this uh, testing activities right that is also you'll be calling out then is also will be talking about a test regulatory or mandatory criteria there are certain uh, projects like uh, life sciences projects or uh, any retail uh, projects right there is a uh, some guidelines or some uh, mandatory regulatory guidelines you should follow and that is very mandatory when you are trying to execute your test cases and you should adhere to those regulatory compliances then that is a, this is a section where you will be clearly calling out uh, your uh, way of uh, tackling the things for that uh, given regulatory body right what are the things you will follow and what are the things you should be mandated for the development team to get all those things in the given project right so then only will say when you are they are meeting all those criteria then only you will be saying from testing side you will be clearing that um, criteria then again uh, you will also be clearly defining uh, what is your pass criteria and fail criteria basically there should not be any confusion in the later stages right you, uh, that's why it is always good to call out when you will say a test case is failed or when you will say a test case is passed that you should clearly call out uh, in the in this section then uh, test entry and execute area so basically 
here you will be clearly calling out when you will be starting your testing and when you will say you will be done with your testing you will be clearly calling out right normally when you are trying to enter means when the build is available or build is stable or when everything is uh, ready you will be taking for testing when you will say exiting to the testing areas when they are meeting the minimum threshold of uh, test uh, coverage or minimum threshold of pass rate or fail rate right or a defect count so whatever the criteria which you guys are going to define in your project you can clearly call that out in this section and what are the test deliverables like because for any given testing project you should clearly declare this section very transparently because let's say if certain stakeholders or leadership team they are expecting certain test deliverables then that should clearly uh, coming out in this section to call out let's say i will be uh, delivering a daily status report or weekly status report or i will be delivering a test plan or i will be delivering a test strategy right or i will be delivering a test case documents or test closures so that things will be clearly calling out so what all the deliverables you will be making as part of uh, your uh, overall test planning right as part of the given project you should clearly call that out uh, what are your test deliverables the next thing is what are your test suspension and reception criteria so this is very crucial because when you will be starting uh, your test case uh, when you will be starting your testing and when you will be saying i will be done with my testing or when i am going to say i am going to restart my testing everything should be documented here basically this section also will be required to be discussed with various stakeholders then you will be documenting in this section like what are your criteria as part of your testing uh, lead as, as a testing lead or a test manager will be clearing clearly calling out your suspension and resumption criteria then test environment or stopping or training needs basically uh, before any uh, project is getting started you would be assessing what all the environment would be required for to test right so every details you should be calling out your environment details it could be your um, uh, desktops or it could be mobile recommend or your software recommends everything you would be documenting it and also with respect to your staffing how much staff is required what are the different levels of the staffing is required who is already identified right and uh, once the staffing is identified like is there any training requirement for those staff staffing resources are they lacking in certain area what are the skills required everything you would be documenting in this section that would clearly you will be documenting in a more transparency way so that people understand it that these are the minimum things you would be required to perform your testing so these are the some of the very important uh, things would be there in any test plan and uh, you should articulate this test plan in a very effective manner in a very effective manner and crisp and clear manner so that all the stakeholders would be in the same page when they go through this test plan they will have a clear idea basically what is your plan as a test leader a test manager that, that you are going to execute in your project right and you are the way how you are going to tackle this project from testing perspective that you are going to document in this uh, test plan so i am hoping uh, you guys clearly get an idea so what how the test plan is really looking and what are the various things you should write so what are the different contents will be there in this test plan how to input this document with uh, various inputs from the various stakeholders everything you might have got a clear understanding if you really like this video please click on like button and if you are not subscribed to our testing channel youtube channel then please subscribe and bell notification so that all our future videos will be in your inbox as in when we publish our new videos thanks for watching with this video bye for now take care